Steve, you know the Jackson family better than almost anybody out there. I'm trying to understand why a family would come over for an intervention and he would see them in a security trailer, wouldn't let them in the house. Does this make sense to you? No, Tell me were, about the family I, dynamic. I would say that, there were people, that, that, there were people that, with him that, who wanted this kind of control, who wanted him to see that way. Whatever he was doing, I cannot say I don't know, that um, they wanted to have that control over him. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, there are certain absolutely. people. Which Latoya has made it adhere to about that. There are certain people who work for him who wanted this kind of control. Keep him, whatever, like put him in a state of mind. Yes, very, very much so. You know? Yes. And I don't want to elaborate about that, but I will say that, um, again, uh, Mr. Jackson, had he been involved, he would be like, that, remember, that's, that's still his son. That's still Mr. Jackson's I think, son. I think if he just had family exactly. around him, period. Exactly. That's, that, was a, that was a conversation but, that, that we would have, is that where, where is everybody? But there are people that, block, the people that block the family. Like, right. there, there are many times that he was aware, unaware that they came to see him, correct? But did, correct. He, but exactly. did he want those people around? Well, I think, you know, like, look, we, you know, just a little while ago, we are talking about somebody who would walk into a business meeting and take control of it, and in the studio and take control of it, be on a stage, you know, ran so many aspects of his own life. I mean, I, I, I'm sure, like any celebrity, Michael Jackson had a lot of people around him who maybe did not have his best interests yes, at heart. Yes, absolutely. But ultimately, I mean, who do you ultimately blame for that? I mean, I think that Michael Jackson you know, if Michael Jackson doesn't want somebody around, they are not around. I mean, that... Right. But, Ryan, if you want, if you're not yourself, if people are doing something to you uh, subconsciously or consciously, you'll know about it, and you're not yourself, how can you have the control? I mean, wait, 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 but Steve, mm. what does that... Wait, 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 you're let me just, let me no, just step in for a second. What, let me just step in. What does that mean, you're not yourself? I mean, what are we, what are we getting at here? Because I, you you I know you're saying you that... You tell me, ask Latoya about it. She knows more about it. I mean, there, again, there are people that... Who are control. these people? I keep hearing about these people. Well, I can't, now, Diane might know. She's a reporter. You know, yeah. No, but, 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 okay, so let me ask you a different question then, Steve. Why can't you say their names? I'd rather not. I mean, and I, I just hear different stories like that, you know. Why, well, is there some sort of danger issue? No, I'm just saying that there are certain people that there's a, alluded to the fact that you, you, you're worth more dead than alive also. You know, it's interesting. Who kept Michael Jackson away from his family? Enablers or Michael Jackson himself? It's just another facet of this complicated situation involving Michael Jackson. That's the question we're talking about tonight. Who was the real Michael Jackson? Coming up next. What big star is sexuality out of in question? You, when you have the sexuality question, you know you're a star. Mm -hmm. Whether it's from Lady Gaga right now, to whatever like that. We'll talk about how the King of Pop dealt with rumors about his sexuality. I think the other thing with Michael Jackson that a lot of people wonder about is his sexuality. It was constantly a question. People were always saying, well, we've heard the stories about the children. We don't know what's going on there. Love women. Who is, he loved he, women. Yeah, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, we, I mean, I, I, I'm telling you firsthand knowledge. We, I, I picked up a friend from the airport, you know, and, and brought him to the house, you know, so, yeah. And he'd say, you know, comments and about, you know, somebody being beautiful and, you know, in that sense, so, yeah, absolutely. What, what big star's sexuality had been questioned? You, when you had the sexuality question, you know you're a star. Mm -hmm. Whether it's from Lady Gaga right now, to whoever like that. I mean, it's worse for a male like that, yeah, but good point. It, it, it makes a star them like that. Oh, you like, you arrived now. The question of sexuality. Mm -hmm. Diane, you look, you're giving me a quizzical look here. Well, I don't care what adults do. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you like men or women or whatever. I care as a mother and as a journalist, if children are being hurt. Absolutely. And that's why I got involved in the case in the beginning, because that was the charge. And I stayed interested in the story for so long because Michael Jackson is such a fascinating person to watch. I don't care if he was gay. I don't care if he likes women. I don't care if he likes men. I just am encouraged to see how smart and engaging and wonderful his three children are right yeah, now they are. They are. that's Absolutely. the important thing Absolutely. to me you know some people would say that his children are so wonderful they're so well adjusted if he treats his children that way anthony how could he be the kind of person who would then go out and do what some people were alleging to other children um 
I think the people have many different aspects. I'm not saying he did those things, but I don't think the fact that he was a good father, I mean, that's, you know, it's like you read about these mafia guys, you know, gee, you know, he gave, you know, he had a great fireworks show or he used to give everybody sandwiches or something. He's but, such a nice guy. Yeah, you know, I think that it's possible to have different aspects in your life, you know, and, you know, what you might do with, you know, with your own family, I don't necessarily think implies a whole lot about what you might do in some other situation, not to say that he did those things. I don't know that you could conclude that because he was a great father, you know, he couldn't well, possibly Ryan, have Well, people have forgotten that, that again, once again, Diane said he was found not guilty. Not guilty. And I think had he been found guilty, he would have died right there that day. I think he would have just dropped dead, I think. From knowing him, the Michael I knew, he, he just dropped dead. Mm -hmm. And had he settled, which I'm glad Diane alluded to the fact that had he did the first trial, maybe he should have had, went ahead and had the first trial. And that would have raised a lot of doubts to him. Of he didn't. And he regretted the fact that he, didn't, that he settled. The fact he, of the matter is, you can be a good parent, mm -hmm. a male or a female parent, and still have an unhealthy appetite for other children. You read the FBI profile on pedophilia, and um, it's actually very rare for a child molester to turn on their own children. It's other people's children. Uh, and uh, again, I'm not saying that I think or I know that Michael Jackson was a pedophile, but to say, well, gosh, he had these great three children and they're so normal and so it can't be true, that's just not right. We're looking inside the death of the life and death of Michael Jackson. Drinking or drugs, what was the King of Pop's real problem? But I, you know, like I said, I did see him um, intoxicated a few times. And um, what it was, I have no idea. Every day, HLN finds the stories that connect us. We interpret what is happening in the world today. What does it mean that it happened? What do we tell other fathers? What can they learn from your story? This is America. Wow, look at that. That's MJ performing Man in the Mirror in L.A. back in 1989. Welcome back to Special Report. I'm Ryan Smith. Recently, I sat down with a roundtable of experts to discuss the Conrad Murray case and Michael Jackson's life. On that panel, investigative reporter Diane Diamond, Anthony DeCurtis, contributing editor for Rolling Stone, Michael Jackson's former bodyguard, Mike Garcia, and one of his best friends, Steve Manning. And, you know, one of the most controversial topics we addressed, whether it was drugs or drinking, that was the king of pop's biggest problem. Now in the aftermath, we have the trial of his doctor, Dr. Conrad Murray. Now, Mike, you had encounters with Dr. Murray. What was he like? Nice guy. Very nice guy. Um, you know, he was brought in to take care of the children. Children were sick when they came from Ireland. Um, very kind. And, um, you know, he, he even mentioned it. We were all standing inside the garage. You know, and he even mentioned, you know, I like to get him, you know, I like to get him healthy. At the time, Mr. Jackson was, was sick himself. You know, when they came from Ireland, they, were all, they all had caught a cold. So, um, you know, I think, I think Dr. Murrow always had his best intentions. He's accused of involuntary manslaughter at this point. Right. Do you think that he bears some responsibility for Michael Jackson's death? I think the only people that know what happened in that room was Mr. Jackson and him. And, um, I, you know, like I said, from, from what I gathered from Dr. Murray, you know, he, he had his best, his best intentions. Now, Diane, what I'm having trouble wrapping my head around is, as far as we can see, and the trial's coming up, so we'll really learn about this. As far as we can see, he had some sort of surgical hookup in Michael Jackson's home where he was administering propofol to him. Right. This is a drug I've talked to doctor after doctor after doctor who has told me that you never administer this Outside unless you're in a hospital. A hospital right. How could this man, who, who is his personal doctor, and care for him? And again, we can't know exactly what happened in these situations until this trial starts. But Diane, I want to get your opinion on this. How could he do that with, with, with such an important person in his care, just for any patient? How could he do that outside of a surgical lab? What does that tell you about Dr. Murray? That is the $64,000 question, which will be asked at the trial. Mm -hmm. Propofol should never be outside a hospital. A cardiologist, which is what Dr. Murray is, is not an anesthesiologist. He should never, ever be administering it. And that's going to be his big cross to bear. He might be a wonderful guy, but this is not what you do. This is not 
first do no harm. This is against the Hippocratic Oath. Now, I know that the defense will say that other doctors came forward over the years and got Michael Jackson hooked on drugs to the point where he just kept seeking out stronger and stronger drugs so he could sleep. Insomnia does terrible things to you. And, you know, to answer your question, how could this doctor have done this? Money. I'll tell you in a little phrase, $150,000 a month. Conrad Murray was about to lose his house. He has several different children with several different women. He had a lot of obligations he was not meeting. And $150,000 a month. He says he was going to wean Michael Jackson off of this. Well, it wound up that Michael Jackson was dead. And somebody's going to have to answer for that. Steve, do you agree that this was about money? Yeah, I mean, yes, 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 yes. You know, at, go ahead. at a level of celebrity that, that Michael Jackson achieved, you could find a doctor Absolutely. to pretty much do anything exactly. yes. you want. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Partly yeah. for money, partly because they feel special being around you. You know, they're walking in and out of the places with you. They're, all of those things, I mean, you just see it all the time. I mean, I, I don't know, this guy may be innocent as the driven snow but that you could find a doctor to do those things i i don't doubt that for a second if it wasn't dr murray it would have been oh some absolutely other doctor. but, but absolutely. okay so here's the other side of it the defense is going to say in this case that michael jackson was really responsible for this that he had a drug habit that he might have been doing things outside of dr murray's presence so mike i have to ask you did you ever see michael jackson intoxicated yes tell me about that um, I saw him, you know, a few times, you know, not so much that we would uh, inquire with him. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't outrageous or anything. Um, but um, I think there was a little bit more that might have went on that Dr. Murray knew, you know. And just like he said, as far as money, you know, he might have been a little bit of starstruck and, and, and maybe went outside the lines, as, you know, as far as bringing Popeful outside the hospital. But, um, you know, like I said, the only people that really know what happened was the people that were inside that room. But Mike, we see something like this is it, and we see these days before he's about to give this huge concert, days before his death, he's rehearsing, he's practicing, he looks like a man who is totally healthy. He's in better shape than all of us. And yet, I guess the implication might be that he had been hooked on drugs. So, so Mike, I ask you this, did you, w would he be intoxicated on a consistent basis? No, not on a consistent basis, no. Was it drugs or was it drinking? I never saw him with any kind of drinking. I never saw him with any kind of drugs. Um, but I, you know, like I said, I did see him um, intoxicated a few times. And um, what it was, I have no idea, you know. But um, he, uh, he's not going to indulge in something like that with us anyway. I, I don't think he would. Do you think he's capable of killing himself, as the defense is trying to indicate? I no, I don't think he did that. I don't think he. I don't think he killed himself. Was there an accident? Maybe, could have been, but I don't think he did. I don't think he did it purposely. You know, the bottom line is this: Dr. Murray is doing whatever he's doing with propofol illegally with Michael Jackson, and on the nightstand he sees more than a dozen prescription meds. This is a doctor. He knows that mixing propofol in your arm with a lot of different meds is not safe now did michael jackson take a handful of something there were other things in his system but the bottom line is you have taken an oath to do no harm as a doctor and when you see a nightstand full and you're putting propofol in the arm you should be thinking twice three times four times mm. and mike did you see meds like that around michael jackson no you never gone into his bedroom okay okay no. so he kept that off limits mm. Even but we gave him that was... respect. That's okay. his. That's his privacy. All right. All right. And just so I'm clear here, is that normal with celebrity clients, or is that something that's particular to him that he insisted on? Did that Did that give you any sense of suspicion? I'll say that, um, like what he was saying, you know, a lot of celebrities do get away with things, you know, and um, what he had in his room, I, I can't really comment on. All right. You know, the defense is going to try to say that Michael Jackson somehow got up off the bed. The little tiny drip of propofol wasn't enough and drank propofol. They're going to be testing his urine. Every doctor I've talked to, as you've talked to a lot, say if you drank propofol, it would have no effect on you. That's not the way it is ingested into your body.